Hello Josh. Hello. Again, mm -hmm. something good about this uh, lockdown thing, at least we've spent plenty of quality time together. Yeah. Mm. Plenty of videos. Plenty of videos, yep, that's right. My special guest is back. Mm. My extremely special guest when it's Josh. Um, because we work well together, don't we, dude? Yeah. We certainly do. He's so tech savvy, it's unbelievable. Now, if you watched my What's On My PSP video, my magic PSP video, you'll uh, have known that, you know, obviously, I didn't discuss a lot about how to achieve that, guys. So, me and Josh got talking, didn't we, Josh? Mm -hmm. And we've decided to make another um, magic video of how to magic a system. And this time we're going to do the PSP, guys. How to make your own magic PSP. How to make your own magic PSP, guys. And then you can make videos like that one, can't you? And say, what's on your magic PSP for a change? It can be you doing it. Yep. Yeah, I mean you. you pack it down, stop picking your nose. That's disgusting, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, guys, yeah, in all seriousness, me and Josh, or mainly Josh, is going to show you how to hack your PSP. Let's be quite blunt. Keep calling it magic, but it's hacking it, guys, so that you can run um, <clears throat> backup games, guys. Yep. Magic backup games. So in this video, it's going to be covering the very last firmware so the very latest one guys mm -hmm. and as i would say probably the last one because it was released in 2015 or something wasn't yeah. it so i don't think sony are going to come along all of a sudden out of the blue and drop another bloody psp firmware so this should be the end of it guys so this will be your permanent custom firmware to run all this lovely stuff and i mean it, it's not just down to games is it josh no you can run homebrew emulators retroarch ps1 games yeah there is so much scope to having a custom firmware on your PSP. Mm. It literally, I know people say it all the time, but it breathes new life into an old console, guys. Yeah. And of course, yes, it gives you a free way of getting hold of all those games. And anybody who's been watching my channel for a while, even on the PSP, there's games that you can pay through the bloody nose for. Mm. So why shouldn't you be able to download that ROM, test it, before you stick your fingers in your pockets and spend all that money. At least it gives you a proper little play on a game before you spend all that money. Yeah. yeah. Or no, you yeah. can run games that you have on UMD without mm -hmm. having to take the UMD around with you. Yeah, because there's something about lasers. Any laser in any machine, the more you use it, it's going to burn out, guys. Yes. Sooner or later, that bloody laser, whether it's in a PS2, PS3... PS4, Xbox One, whatever, PSP, guys, it will, in the end, break and burn out. So, on this custom firmware, guys, you can literally dump the games from your UMDs onto your computer and then use them as a digital. Yep. That's fantastic. You've still got the game sitting on your shelf, yet you're not breaking that game by opening the bloody box, sticking the UMD disc in there, and burning your laser out. So it's a fantastic way for you to literally have backups. Mm -hmm. As well as, yeah, we all know, getting some freebie games. But anyway, guys, we're going to be using this little beauty. Now, me and Josh both can't highly recommend this enough, guys. Now, we all know Sony and their infinite wisdom with the PSP and the Vita, they produce their own memory cards what a stupid freaking idea because both those consoles may just have smacked the arse of nintendo if they would have used micro sd cards mm. well you get an adapter guys this particular one is a crap one yeah there's a lot better quality ones i've had this one for donkeys years and years and years i've had this one and it's yeah it's starting to break and doesn't always want to show and yeah i've got a better one coming guys mm. once it's in the psp it's fine but as you can see this one takes two 
So you can literally put two 64 gig micro SD cards in there and you get 128 gig out of that, guys. That is mm. phenomenal. You can put hundreds of bloody PSP games on there. And literally, it's just a micro SD card rammed into the little adapter, he says, trying to get it back in without breaking it more. And yeah, and you can put two in. I'm only running a 64 gig one on it at the moment, yeah. but you can put two in at a time. So fantastic. Because, I mean, you'd be lucky these days, wouldn't you, Josh, to go into CEX and even find a 4 gig one yeah. of the proper Sony ones. Um, what do they call them again? Oh. Memory Stick Duo. Memory Stick Duo, yeah. You'd be lucky to find a 4 gig, and you certainly won't for bloody hell or high water find an 8 gig one. 128 gig, guys, if you want. It's a no-brainer. These cost about 3 quid. Mm. These little adapters are 3 quid. Yes, you've got to provide the memory card, but they're not exactly expensive micro SD cards, are they? Mm. You could put two 32 gigs in there. You'll have 64. Yeah. Put whatever you want in there. It's still going to be bloody more room than what Sony give you. Mm -hmm. So, yes, guys, we're going to be using that. So, would you like to join us as we do this? But before... Oh, oh go on, yeah. Before you follow the tutorial, we are not responsible if you break your PSP. Thank you, Josh. I did forget there, didn't I? Yeah. Yes, guys, a little heads up there. I know we all joke about it when we do these um, tech videos. Um, but yes, the risk is at your own <laughs> is your own risk, guys. Yeah. But follow the tutorial by the letter and there should be no problems. And I tell you what, there's nothing easier than PSP custom mm. firmwares. So if it goes wrong... It's all on you. It's all on you and I'm bloody shocked. But yeah, no come back to us, guys. Sorry. Mm -hmm. We won't replace your PSP for no. you. No. No, no definitely not. No, it's on your own head, guys. Mm -hmm. Right. So with all that said, guys, do you want to join us? All right, then, guys. We'll see you up there as we hook the computer up. Yep. See you in a minute, guys. Right, you lovely people. Here we go. We've, uh, yeah, how to put custom firmware onto any model PSP, guys. Does this include the uh, PSP Go, Josh? Yeah, it includes every single model except for the PSP Street, the E1000 model. Yeah, that one is an absolute pain in the ass. You don't seem to be able to do much of it because it's got no Wi-Fi or anything, of course. Yeah. So anyway, guys, yeah, every other model bar the Street. Um, so yeah, you either have to be on the very latest firmware, which is 6.61, isn't it? Yeah, you have to be on 6.61. Yeah, you have to be on that one there, guys, yeah. If not, then obviously you can go onto the Sony website and yep, get right this download. Yeah, just scroll down here, agree and download. And down yep. here, they show you how to install it right here. So just follow their tutorial on how to install the latest update and you should be good to go. But only yep. if you don't have 6.61 version on your PSP. Yep. And that is probably going to be the very last version they ever make anyway, guys. And this was yep. released way back, wasn't it? January 15th, 2015. Yeah, so you know you've got no no problems after that, guys. This that'll be the latest one that's up on the website. Yeah. Um. So yeah, once you're on six point six one official, then you can move forward to doing the custom firmware, guys. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to let Josh take over now. So once we're on the latest version, we'll put the link in the description to the download for the Infinity Custom Firmware Pack because the customer is called Infinity. And the way you can get this pack is there's this other guy, Mr. Mario 2011. He also did a tutorial on this, but he put together this like amazing pack. It's perfect. It has all the files that you would need to install the custom firmware onto your PSP. So this will be in the description to download it. You will have to download this file. Yeah, this file. And you're just going to want to put it onto your desktop as I have uh, right here. So I extracted all the files already right into here. So what you're going to want to do is open up your PSP memory card. And you're going to want to right click and format it. If you have any files on here that you don't want to lose, make sure you back them up because it's going to be deleting everything off of the SD card. So you just want to go and click start. OK. Wait for it to format. And there you go, format complete. So you can close out of that, open back up your SD card. Or if you have your PSP connected through the USB, then it should still show up here, as long as you have the option enabled. And you're going to want to create a folder called PSP. 
create a folder in here, call it game. And that's that for the SD card. Now you're going to want to go over to the custom firmware pack. And what you're going to want to do is go to the original firmware folder. And here, if you have the original firmware for 1000, so if your PSP model is the 1000, 2000 or 3000, you're going to want to open this up in PSP game, create a folder and call it, wait, no, you don't want to create a folder. You're going to want to keep this in mind. Go to custom firmware. And now there's two custom firmwares that you can pick from, LME or Pro Custom Firmware. I prefer Pro because this one I've used before. So you're going to want to copy everything that's inside Pro to the root of your SD card. So where it has the PSP folder, you're going to want to copy these over. There we go. So then inside here, you should have a game folder and there you go. Fast recovery, Pro update. So you want to, go, want to go back here, you see this PSP folder right here, copy it straight to the root again. So go to the root, copy it over. And there we go. You want to go to, you're going to want to go to the PSP folder, game, and now you'll have Flasher, Maker and Pro Update, Config, Fast Recovery. So you'll want to go to Maker, and here is where you want the original firmware. So as I said, if you have a 1000, 2000, 3000 model, you just want to copy over the, I think it's both of them, copy over both of them. This shouldn't take too long. But if you're on the PSP Go, you'll have these files, so you'll want to copy them into your maker folder. But once you've copied these into your maker folder, if you have a Go, only if you have a Go, you use these ones going to want to just take away the go part after you've copied it to your usb drive so it should just look like this and there you go that's all the setup that you need for your psp's sd card so then you can eject it out of your computer and then you just want to want to take it out and put it into your psp which now, we'll show in a minute in the past uh the uh, newer custom firmwares for the PSP, they weren't permanent and that's why you had the uh, fast recovery isn't it, that's yeah. why that's an option in there, because every time you fully turned off your PSP you would have to, when turning it on again, flash it, but now this is a permanent custom firmware guys yeah. and you don't need to do that anymore, fantastic. Permanent for every model it's except a, street. <laughs> yeah, permanent for every model except street. And uh, you actually will never need that fast recovery, will you? So, no, you just run it once or yeah, twice and it. then you can get rid of it. And then you can get rid of it, yeah. Whereas you used to have to have it sitting there on your card in case you ever <laughs> turned it off by accident. You or know, run out of charge. Probably, yeah, or run out of charge, yeah. So it's not a problem anymore, guys. Nowadays, it's permanent and it's brilliant. Yeah. Right guys, now over to the PSP as we install the custom firmware. Over to you Josh. Yep. So, you'll see you have one, two, three, four, five new options in your section where you load up your games off your memory stick. You have all these new options. But, you're going to want to want to run your custom firmware's installer. So for pro custom firmware, it's just called the update. But for LME, I'm not sure, you'll have to look into that. But if you're just following this tutorial straight off then it should say update just going to want to run that it does take a second and i'll tell you what guys we've always used pro and it's the best one anyway. yep. hello <laughs> and here we go here's some text so there's x to launch triangle to uninstall l to reinstall and r to exit so just going to want to install it by pressing x and a bunch of text will pop up, press X to start. Hello. But um, there you go. You've now installed custom firmware onto your PSP, but it's not permanent yet. That is the part that we're going to do now. So, the SD card's being a bit stupid, So, but we have to go back onto the computer anyway, I think. But for now, you'll have custom firmware running on your PSP. If you want to keep it like this, 
then you can, but you'll have to rerun it every time you load up your PSP. What you just press there, guys, is the select button, I do believe. Yeah, that loads the VSH that, menu. Yeah, and that brings up this tiny little menu, and that's when you know your PSP's got a custom firmware on it. But as yep. Josh just said, he's going to put the permanent uh, patch on now. Yep, so we'll do that in a second. Right, guys, now to install the uh, patch. Yep, so you're going to want to go down to 6.61 Infinity Firmware Builder. This is going to build your custom firmware that keeps it permanent. It's going to install it as if it was like an update file, I guess. You could put it that way. But it creates a custom firm. Well, that's what it's called, custom firmware. That keeps it permanent. Because for now, as soon as you turn off your PSP, it is not going to work anymore. There we go. You can have build hybrid firmware or exit. So you're going to want to click on the first option, build hybrid firmware. There we go. It's going to do some stuff. This takes about five minutes. So... Yeah, we'll see you guys in about five minutes when this is done, I guess. Right, people, let's uh, let's make that permanent, Josh, shall we? Yeah, because it's built your custom firmware. Now we just need to actually apply it. Yep. And so then it becomes it, permanent. Yeah, so as you can permanent. see, press X to quit. There we go. Hello. Now, of course, when you turn it off fully, you're not risking losing it. Not quite yet. Yeah. You just have to copy a file. So... You can press select, shut down your PSP, and now we're going to put the memory stick into the computer and copy some files. This will take like two seconds. But what we're going to do is copy the custom firmware file from the part that makes it into the part that can actually flash it onto your PSP. So like, as if it was updating your PSP. But it's just making the custom firmware permanent. So, there it is. Gonna to want to go to PSP, Game, Maker, and what is this? Data.mfc. You're gonna to want to copy data.mfc. You can do right click and copy or control C. You're gonna to want to take it to a flasher and just paste it in there. Give it a second. It's only about 30 megabytes, shouldn't take too long. And there we go. All done on the computer already. So you're gonna to want to take your SD card out of your computer put it back into your PSP of course we're using the um, the adapter there guys it lets you put a micro SD card two micro SD cards into your PSP yeah which is absolutely fantastic because as we all know Sony decided to make a blinking their own format of a memory card for the PSP as they did with the Vita as well which was really stupid yeah so go on eBay, guys, and grab yourself one of those adapters. Yep. They're yeah. actually not that expensive. And you can also get one for the Vita as well, which yeah. goes into the game card slot. We'll and it's a Mac SD card. Yeah, we're going to be doing a video on that soon as well, guys. Yeah. But anyway, you're going to want to go back to where your game, your games are. And you're going to want to go to Firmware Flasher. Oh, I forgot. You have to run your custom firmware again. So you're going to go to Update. I think it's update, it might be recovery, I might be wrong, who knows. I hope it's update, because I just clicked on it. But if it's not, it'll only take like less than a minute to go to. Okay. Yep, yeah, there we go. So then you're going to want to press X again to launch your custom firmware. As you can see, already completed. Press X to start, because it copied all the files before, which lets it work. It doesn't have to do that all over again, so it's much quicker. Once it's booted, you're going to want to press select to just make sure that the custom firmware is actually running. There it is. Yeah. And we can go to the flasher, finally. And this is going to apply it and make it permanent. Give it a second. Then after this, you, do, you just set it as your default permanent custom firmware and you can delete everything off of your... SD card and you'll have plenty of room for your backups. Anyway, this is going to take a minute, so we'll cut to when it's done. Alright guys, so as you can see, completed, press X to reboot. So this is going to turn your PSP completely off and back on, which usually you'd have to reflash your custom firmware to get it back. But all we have to do is press X. 
give it a second. And you're going to have to set your date and time again. Ah, oh, yeah. So as you can see here, settings information is corrupted. Press the O button to repair and restore default settings. This is normal. Don't worry about this. I'm going to press circle. And here is where you set your time and date again. But yeah, that's completely normal. You don't have to worry about that. Josh is going to go into the system information and show you that this has now been... No, there's one more step in there. There's one more step? Yeah. Oh, one more step. One more quick step. And for some reason, it just turned itself off and back on. Which normally it should just go straight to the initial setup, but oh well. You're going to want to just set all your default options. We don't really care. Go away. And there we go. I'll change all that later. But if we press select, yeah, we have to, this is the last time you'll have to run this update file, then you can delete it completely. Because ah. you could just set it as your default in the Infinity configuration app, and then it will load it automatically every time you turn on your PSP. Hello. So again, press X. For some reason, it has to redo that again. I'm not sure why since last time it did it straight away, but, you know, if it works, it works. Confirm that Pro Custom Firmware is working, which it is. Go down to Configuration, which should be the first option, unless you have games installed already. <laughs> Give it a second. There we go, welcome to Infinity. So you want to go to the left and select Pro Custom Firmware since that's one installed. Once you press X, it should have a little star right there and that means it's been selected as the one that will automatically load on boot. You never want to select ME Custom Firmware because we didn't install that one. So uh, this should be fine. If they ever release an update, you can update here, obviously. But it should be fine for now, so we can press home, yes. And there you go, your fully custom firmware PSP. So now I'll show that it will keep the custom firmware when it's completely turned off. So let's see. As you can see, shut down device. PSP is completely off, almost. Yep, there we go. Power LED is off, let's turn it on. And then when we press select, the VSH menu should pop up straight away without having to run Pro Custom Firmware Update. And there it is. Working. Permanent Custom Firmware. And here's where you can overclock your PSP and stuff. But you might not want to overclock it too much in case. You break it. Or, or it depletes the battery really quickly. But that's well, another yeah. thing that I don't want to get into right now. Well, that's your little hacking menu, guys. Yeah. And as, so, I, as I was going to say earlier, Josh is going to go into the system information and just show you um, that it's the uh, Pro. Oops, so you want to go to system settings, all the way down, system information, and there we go. There you go. 6.61 Pro C Infinity. Yeah. All nicely done, guys. Yeah. And then you can also format your memory stick now. now so it'll delete it, all yeah. of the Infinity files, all the Pro Custom Firm files but it will still be permanent on here, so you don't have to worry at all. And don't forget, Josh, to mention the fact that you have to format your, your yeah, card. You have anyway. to format your memory card in the PSP if you want to have the folders automatically set out for you when you copy your backups onto it. Yeah, your magic backups. So there we go. Yeah, so as, as Josh just said, guys, yeah, um, you must format, format the memory card. Do not forget that because otherwise it will not have the correct folder yeah. system. As you can see, yeah. nothing installed anymore. But if I press select, doo -doo. so there you go. All done. Permanent custom firmware. So well, now... We're, what we're going to do now, Josh, we're going to show them... We'll show you some game ISO backups running on this thing. Right, and where to put them, guys. Yep, and where um, to put them on your SD card on the computer. computer. Right, okay, back in a sec, guys. Okay, so here is your, well, my SD card 
plugged into my computer and as you can see there are some folders here I don't think the ISO one is created automatically because this is an SD card that has already been done so you should have PSP game and here is where you, if you download any homebrew games or applications you're going to want to put them in here so like emulators and retroarch and stuff like that and funny enough guys PlayStation 1 games go into this yep. folder to be able to sh be shown if you have any PS1 games, they go in PSP game. Yeah. Then for videos, if you ever, for some reason, wanted to watch any PlayStation videos or movies or whatever, PSP videos, movies, on your PSP, if I'm remembering correctly, just create a folder in here and call it video. Oh, wait, no, you put it in the ISO folder, sorry. Yeah, so I'll show you that I think now. sometimes it's there already in the ISO folder. It builds yeah, it. Here it is, yeah, video. There you go, yeah, it builds it automatically. Yeah. So... For any ISO backups that you might have. Magic backups. You want to put all of them in this folder, ISO, because ISO files. Oh, we've only got one or two there, haven't we? Mm, ha, yeah, ha. One or two. Hmm. I think there's over 100. <laughs> Something like that, possibly. Yeah. And then for your movies, if for some horrible reason you want to watch them, just go in the video folder. Don't be so horrible. The videos are all right on it. Well, they were. Yeah, they were. <laughs> Back then. And then you also have your music folder for your music, pictures for pictures. And if you ever install any VSH plugins, which I'm not going to go into that, you just put them into the SE plugins folder. That is actually um, to build your own themes and stuff. Yeah. Have custom themes and even the text on the uh, on the actual, what do they call it again, the... Um, the X bar is it or something? XMB. XMB. Yeah. yeah, it's all like custom. So this is where you can put like your custom theme plugin. Yeah. You can have like a plugin that puts an FPS counter, stuff like that. Yeah, we might get into that in another video one day, guys. Yep. But there you go. There's all your games, and yep. now we'll show you them running on the PSP. So Shoot. just bear in mind, guys. Any uh, PSP ROMs, they go into iOS folder. I right, sorry. ISO folder, yeah. <laughs> ISO folder and any uh, PlayStation 1 games. You go into your PSP game folder. Yeah. So now we're going to want to put our SD card into our PSP or a little adapter if we have one of these, which we do. And we, we highly, highly, highly stress you should get one of those guys so yeah. that you can use nice big fat micro SD cards instead of the stupid PSP memory cards i'm not sure how big of an sd card you can go so don't like take my word for it well i, I think... know i know for a fact i've had two 64 gigs running on it mm. so 120 whatever it is yeah. i think you can go up to either 256 or 512 gigabytes yeah, something like that. if we go into this folder as you can see custom firmware go into this folder when it wants to load yeah, it's loading, because there's a lot of stuff on this, as yeah, you might have guessed. The more games you have on, guys, the longer it will take to show up. There we go. There we go. There's all our ISOs. PSP minis, our normal PSP games, all on here. Yeah, lots of them. So let's see, what game should I test? I'll try out Loco Roco. Not sure why it's on here twice. Oh, well. Yeah, I know it was done by accident. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's all the games. Ape Escape was on there twice as well. Yeah, yeah. no, that's Ape, Ape Academy 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. But let's try out one of the ISO games then. Because I'm pretty sure Loco Roco was never a digital game. I don't think so, no. No, it was only ever, I think, available on UMD. Yeah. yeah. But, let me open this up quick. I hope it doesn't automatically. No, it won't kick me out of the game. As you can see, no UMD inserted. This game was, I think, never released on PSN, so you could never download it. And it's running on the PSP using custom firmware. Hello. Again, no UMD. And of course, guys, to get these games, uh, these magic games, uh, Google's your best friend. There are still plenty of sites out there where you can get the backups. Yeah. And there are, of course, plenty of your own... of. There are plenty of tools to create your own if you want to do that. Yeah, you just have to dump them from the original UMD guys. Yeah, that's really easy to do as well. I'll show that off quickly, because it only takes a second. But pretty much, it's really simple to copy your games if you want to create backups. 
like original backups you can trust of your games if you don't trust, you know. Sites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as you can see here, USB device right here. It's automatically set to memory stick. So when you plug your USB in to your computer, it will show all the contents on your memory stick. But you can switch this over to, those are all the internals, UMD disk. So as soon as you plug your USB into your computer, it'll pop up on your computer everything that's on the, your UMD disk if you have one inserted. So you can just copy it over onto your computer. Yeah. So you can make your own dumps, guys. Yeah. That's um, not unusual for a person, is it, to make their own dumps, Josh? Yeah. Mm. But yeah, that's um, certainly a safer way than going on to some random bloody website and downloading maybe a virus. Yeah. So that's a very, very safe way of doing it. But there we go. I guess that's the end of the tutorial. Yeah, I guess it is, yeah. And as I say, guys, as long as you can press that select button, it brings up that little hacker menu. Yeah. You know you're sorted. So there we go. That's yeah. how you custom firmware any PSP except the street on any firmware version. Yeah. Well, not any firmware version. 6.61, because that's the latest firmware. Right, so, yeah. And that's yeah. what you should be on in the first place, guys, yep. shouldn't you? Yeah. So anyway, guys, as we said, that includes the PSP Go. And yeah, not a lot else to be said. No, not really. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy making it, Josh? Yep. Yeah. So there you are, guys. Yeah, that's another one done and dusted. I know we're going to be touching on the, I do believe, the 3DS and the DS Lite next, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then we're going to move on to, once I can get out of the bloody house and go to an actual shop, maybe i'm going to get another micro sd card and we're going to redo my vita because for some reason it's playing up hmm. yeah and then we'll stick another micro sd card in that and we'll show you how to do that one while we're at it yeah. um so yes guys a lot more of these videos to come by the so, way i just want to mention quick there's plenty of options to mess around with in the recovery menu just be careful but yeah that's yeah. about it yeah i was going to say actually earlier on yeah always be careful if you're not too sure what you're doing with these um menus these little hacking menus then it's best just to yeah it's best them. just to not touch it to be honest unless yeah. you know what you're doing yeah that's it yeah anyway guys right that's that done and dusted yeah so we're going to say off in then choose and goodbye 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 guys and uh yeah i hope you're still enjoying the content if you are please like comment and subscribe and all that grubbins you know yeah and i'll see you in the next one guys goodbye bye bye